going to start on the stool. I probably won't end up there. All right. Well, good evening. You guys have a good afternoon. Hope so. Um, do remember, uh, next week we will be having our Super Bowl party at this time. Uh, we will still do a Bible study at halftime. We'll uh, uh, we'll get into the Word because it's important that we do that when we get together. But we're just going to have a time of fellowship. And I've been instructed that if you're coming, bring a finger food. So something for people to munch on and and yourself. Otherwise, if you don't bring something, you don't get to eat. That'll be uh, Sunday of the um, hillside gathering. You can bring chili. You can test it out first. And if people are like, wow, this is great. Then you're like, I've got a winning recipe. You, you can poll everybody. Did you like the chili? It's okay. I need to add something to it. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that next week. Um, uh, but this week, we're still going to be in the book of James. If you'd like to turn there, we're going to be in James chapter 4. We're going to be starting in verse uh, 13. Before we do, uh, let, let's pray and uh, ask God to, to, to feed us tonight. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing, Lord, and we pray that you will uh, fill us up tonight so that we can we, we can gain from you and what your word has to say to us, Lord, so that we may conquer uh, your will and that we may uh, do what you called us to do, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in your son's precious name. Amen. I'm glad God knows what we mean because I don't know what that means to conquer his will. I don't know. I said that, but he knows what I meant. I said to help us to conquer your will. Yes. Didn't that's not the words I'm looking for. Uh but he knows. He knows. And uh Yeah, it was like right after I said I'm like, I don't know. Okay. Conquer your will. I, mean, I know what I meant was let's do your will so that we will do your will. But I'm glad to know that you don't listen to me when I pray. She's like, is that what he said? All right. So we're in the book of James. Uh, James chapter four, starting in verse 13. We're going to talk about the danger of self. James says, he says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will travel to such and such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be, for you are like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So because of our, our life, because our life is so short we should never be centered around the self. So I want, to, I, want to, I want us to think about that for a moment. You know, our, our lives are so, so small of a time. When, when, it, when it comes to history, and, and, and as we look back, and uh, as, 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 as we, we, we see... All that's happened is we study history. We, we learn that life is so short. And, and if you live a hundred years, that's just a speck in the timeline. There, there, there's, there's not much to it. And, and, and so we, uh, we, we, but yet we live for that time. I don't know if you, I mean, I know some of you are, are associated or, or, or know who Francis Chan is, but he has this great illustration that he uses for that. And, and, and I would love to have prepared it for you and do it, but uh, 
uh, what he does is he, he has this long, long piece of rope and, and it extends around his, the sanctuary and, and it extends all over the place and it's, it's so long. And he's like, and, and this, this is, this is the, the timeline, you know, and he, and he tells, you know, it's this long line and, and, he, and he has a little part of the rope, uh, you know, turned color like red. And, and and he says, and this is our life. And 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 what what he's really talking about is that the rest of this is eternity and how we're going to spend it with God. But yet we live for this little itty bitty portion. And 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 we do that. And and we find that that we live for just satisfying the self. But yet it's so short that there's got to be something more to this and 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 so james he, he says look what what are you saying today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit and they're making plans for themselves and they're they're doing what they want to do and we're, we're going to become something and he and he says yet you don't know what tomorrow will bring What's what, what's fascinating is we, we've seen this story played out time and time again. But if, but if you ever want to look at history, if you've ever heard the name Wyatt Earp, okay, Wyatt Earp he makes a name for himself as a lawman in Dodge City, and uh, uh, becomes very famous even for his time. And then decides that he and his brothers, they're going to go into business in Tombstone, Arizona. And uh, they get there. He, uh, see, he's centered on making money. I want to do this. We're going to go here. We're going to make money. And during that, that, that time is really what makes Wyatt Earp famous. Because it was that time that... Uh, that he had the the gunshot gunfight at the OK Corral, and because of that event, wound up penniless. And he, he, I mean, it drained him. And he lost a brother, and an, and his other brother lost the use of his arm. And uh, he 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 was injured. All because. This was the idea. We're going to do what we want to do. And James says, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you're focused on self, but you can't control tomorrow. You want to live for tomorrow. You have all these plans for tomorrow, but you can't control it. You know, I, I often talk to people or or, or I, I'll use this when especially uh uh, with with teenagers because you know teenagers they're all set they know exactly what they're going to do right and and they, they have plans all tomorrow and we think that we're in control of our lives so i often ask this question when somebody has this complex that they're in control i ask them well when are you going to die and we don't know. None of us know. None of us may be here tomorrow. We don't, we don't know when we're going to die. We, we're not in control of that. I, I mean, there, there are people who, who said, I am in control of that. And they've taken their own life to realize God allowed it. I knew a man who he, he, he wore a beard even when beards weren't popular, and he showed me why one day. He had a scar right here where he'd placed a gun and he pulled the trigger. But God wouldn't let him die. So we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's, what we're going, what's going to happen. And so this is what James is saying to his readers. He's like, you're making plans. You want to do all these things, but you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen, what your life will be. You're a vapor. Especially when we look at God's timeline. 
A thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. In God's timeline, we'll never see a day. We only live for like an hour. And so uh, we, 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 don't, we, we, don't, we don't have, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Luke, uh, Jesus says this in the book of Luke, chapter 12, starting in verse six, 16, says, then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this, he said. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat and drink and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That's how it is with one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So Jesus tells this parable. He tells a story of of a man who who has everything that he wants. And look and he 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 says several things in there. So he says, he says, What should I do? So where where's his focus? It's it's on him. He says, What should I do? He says, and then I'll say to myself. You have many goods. Store it up. Take it easy. Eat. Drink. And enjoy yourself. Where's the man focused? Completely on him. And God says to him, Tonight, this day, your life is demanded. Because the man is not in control of that. The man is not in control of of tomorrow we're not in control of tomorrow we may have plans but we're not in control of those plans we may we may set our minds to do what we want but in all reality we really aren't in control as to whether they happen or not and so James goes into us talking about the danger of self. We don't, we don't have tomorrow. So focusing on ourself isn't worthwhile. The evil of self, he's going to go into that in James chapter 4, verse 15. He says, so instead, so in, in, instead of, of, of saying, well, this is what we're going to do. Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, We will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. And so James says, uh, says our ultimate goal is to do the will of God rather than our own will. So so look, look at what he says. He says, instead of saying, we will do this. We will make a profit. We are going to live. We're going to be rich. We're going to do all great things. He says, if the Lord wills it, we will live and do this or that. Meaning, I'm going to set my sight on doing things that I, that I know are good, that I, that, that I should be doing, and then if God changes it, so be it. Do we see this played out in Scripture? Oh, yeah, we see this all the time. Paul, he says, I am, am I'm going to go where I want to go on mission. And what does God do? He shuts him down. He says, you're not going there. I'm going to send you to Macedonia. I'm going to have one go to cry out to you, come here, come here. He knew where he wanted to go, but God shut him down. And... So we, we, we see this, that if, if, if my attitude is on myself, then I'm not going, I'm not in control of that. But if my attitude is on God and His will and what He wants for me, then I know that I'm still not in control, but God is. And so we, we, we focus on 
what he is calling us to do, what, what he wants us to do, and that our ultimate goal is to do the will of God rather than our own will. Matthew 6, 19, Jesus says this. He says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The difference between heavenly treasures and earthly treasures is one is eternal and one is temporal. So what does Jesus tell us? We can say, well, I'm going to go and here and there and make money and I'm going to do this but we're not in control. And he says, so don't don't worry about the storing up for treasures on earth. Don't worry about setting uh, the things that are here because moth and rust destroy and thieves break in. You know, we we use this, this, or I use this to, to really relate that you do realize that eventually this building will be torn down or it's going to collapse in on itself. It's not meant to last forever. It can't. It will be destroyed. And and we may come along and fix things like you know we repair lights we we fix things and 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 we repair it and and we use it so it it stands but if 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 we were to abandon this place it would eventually fall in because treasures here they get destroyed you know if 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 it's my dream to build a hundred million dollar mansion. I mean, that's my dream. And I work, and I work, and I slave, and I get it, and I have the money, and I build a hundred dollar, a hundred million dollar mansion. A hundred dollar mansion. That, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to get for my, 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 my daughter. It's a Barbie house right there. Okay? A hundred million dollar mansion. And it's got the works. It's got, all the great latest technology. I can turn my house lights on with my phone. The refrigerator talks to me. The swimming pool is heated. And I mean, there's the one outside is heated. The one inside is cool, you know, because I have more than one swimming pool because we just spent a ton of money. Eventually, it will all be destroyed. It will rust. It will fade. It'll go away. You know, there was once, you, you, you probably at one point in time, when you were young, bought your first car, and you were like, yes, I have worked. This is my treasure. I have made it. I bought my first car. Where is it now? Yeah, mine too. It's junk. Why? Because they fail, they rust, they get destroyed. And that's how we have to think of the things that are here. Now, remember, we we, we talked, there's an eternal reward. There's going to be a time where we're going to close our eyes here. We're going to open them up to Jesus Christ. And everything that we have there is eternal. It's forever. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to get the nice, that we're going to have nice mansions and things like that. But the rewards, they'll never fade. The glory of God will be eternal. The love and the joy and the peace that we will have, the things that we build up there, that we build from here, that we're, we're storing for ourselves are eternal. So if, 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 if we're living for now and the temporal and we're building up everything we can, what does God say? Well, there's your reward. There it is. And for some people, it's going to be the closest thing to heaven that they get. 
Oh, they may be millionaires, maybe billionaires, and have every luxury that there is on the planet. But that's it. The best they'll ever get. And it will rust and decay and it will be destroyed. So Jesus tells us, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth. This is the evil of self. This is the evil that, that, that we, we serve. It's, it's boasting in these things and having, not having these things, but boasting in these things and, and making sure that I have got the best. It's an evil. And it's the evil of self. James is going to go on and talk about the sin of self. James 4.17 says, So it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. I am sitting when I know what the, serv- what the service God demands of me and I choose self over him. I am sinning when I know what God demands and I choose self over over him now i use this verse a lot with uh, especially i used to use it a lot in youth ministry because as a verse it 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 says and and i learned it in a bit different than the the whole than the the christian standard um so i believe it's the niv 84 that says to know the good that you should do and not do it is sin Okay, so it's a, it's a good definition for us in the context of what he's saying. And, and, and I think that that definition, if we were just to look at this, we, we would understand, well, the good things that I know I should do and I don't do them is sin. And, I, and, I, and, and that, that's a good definition of, of sin is, is knowing the good things that I should do and I don't do them in the context of what he's saying. And what James is telling us is that if I know what God has called me to. If, if, if I know that there are other things, that I'm, I'm looking at the self and I'm looking at, at building myself up, I'm looking at storing my wealth, I'm looking at, at, at riches and things that are temporal, and if I know what I should be doing, if I know the good that I should be, which is turning away from these things, if I know the good that I should be doing and I do not do it but to serve self, then I am a sinner. And the and I really think that as Christians, we should be striving to not be that. To not be sinners. I, I, I honestly believe that the Bible calls us to a higher standard. That we don't use our freedom to sin, but we use our freedom to say that I am free from sin. That... that I am no longer half to live under those, those, those laws that I, that I have to subject myself to sin, but that we have one who has conquered sin and that we can overcome it. And we don't have to worry about the things that this life tells us are important. I mean, if you're, if you're if, I mean, you, you know this. We live in a, in a culture, in a country that says stuff. You got to have stuff. It's how you show how important you are. I mean, th- and this goes down to 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 kids in in, in grade school. If I mean, I'm, I'm be, I was one of those kids. My my family was poor. I did not get the sixty four crayon coloring box. Okay. No Crayola crayons for me. The 60, Oh, I had friends. That, woo, look at that. I got the eight color smart art wax that you go like this and it don't even color. It just leaves globs of wax. Those were the crayons I got. And what do you do? You're like, I'm not as important. I'm not as good. My family's not as good. And you want stuff and, and you want that. And you, 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 you want those crayons. Those Crayola crayons, I mean, and then we have kids that, that, that they have to be wearing the right kind of jeans and the right kind of, you know, 
stuff to the, the shirts and all this stuff and make sure it's bought in the right stores. And, and, and we live in a culture of stuff. How we determine our status. But all that stuff is going to fade away. I think back on, on a, I, I, w- I was listening to a, a comedian and, and he was doing this bit on, he was like, you, you, you realize all that stuff that you've had in your life, it's somewhere, it exists somewhere. I mean, some, he's like, that flannel shirt that I had to have back in high school, it's somewhere. I mean, it's somewhere. It's, it's, in a, it's in a, it's in a, it probably wound up going to somebody at a thrift shop and who knows where. But see, all of our stuff gets destroyed. And if we know what we're supposed to be doing, because we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about the things that, 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 are, that we, we need. God knows and he provides for them. We have faith and we trust in him. We don't have to worry. But we can know the good that we should be doing. If you ever get a chance to to read about, uh, if you haven't already, about George Mueller and the faith that he put in God through his boy's home. And he lived in a time where there was no cooperative program. You know, he's not, he's not funded by a big, uh, uh, you know, Southern Baptist convention. He has to live based on what people can give when they can give it in a time where money isn't, you know, everywhere. You know, today we can just buy things on credit. And... He he can't he couldn't do that, and how he would get those boys to pray for their needs, and God delivered, and he was able to do great things, and share the gospel with so many young men. Because he knew the good, he said, "I'm I'm going to do what's good." I, I talked about Lottie Moon this morning, who gave up everything she didn't she didn't get married she didn't have a family she gave up everything to serve the lord and that always had her needs met i i i I will tell you i believe very differently theologically but when i look at somebody being very current like mother Teresa, and just serving and doing Give up everything. And there are Christians that are doing it all over the world that will just give up everything. And, and maybe God's not calling you to that. Maybe, maybe God's not uh, calling you to surrender your life like that. But, but at least to say, if the Lord wills, we're going to do this. And if God changes it, so be it. We'll follow the Lord. Let's pray and we'll be uh, we'll be dismissed. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one more verse. You know what? I'm just going to read it so you have it and then we'll pray and be dismissed. John 59, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commands and remain in his love. So let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray that you will uh, just strengthen us so that we may accomplish your will, so that we may go out into this world, God, and share the gospel, and that your will will be the first thing that we seek after, that we will seek after you and whatever you call us to do, Lord, that we will say, yes, I will go. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do in your son's precious name. Amen.